What is up everybody? This is Voth and in this video we're going to be discussing the overall style and flavor of the vampire counts. Now obviously they're to a certain degree inspired by Count Dracula because after all they both have count in their name and they're vampires. Um, I would assume that off the battlefield they're going to be somewhat personable and maybe even charismatic but once they go to war and those gloves come off they bring a very bestial and monstrous roster to the battlefield. The roster feels like something that you would run into perhaps while playing Castlevania or maybe watching Vampire Hunter D. The bulk of the army is made up of festering walls of zombies, hordes of skeletons, but there's also going to be bats and wolves and of course they're going to have strange hybrids of the two of them, some with and without skin. And then what undead roster is complete without a ghost of some sort? They have raids and spirits that can also support the army in interesting ways. Okay, so let's talk infantry. The bulk of the infantry in the Vampire Count's army is going to be made up of waves and waves and waves of zombies, skeletons, and other cheap throwaway undead. Like spirit hosts who have a trait called ethereal which apparently means they cannot be harmed by non-magical weapons so a standard unit of skirmishers would just be wasting ammo on them making them a great screening unit the vampire counts are not without their heavy infantry though as you see these grave guards are wearing quite a significant amount of armor and we also have crypt ghouls which may serve as some sort of shock infantry in the vampire counts army now I would like to touch quickly on their skirmishers. Now it's going to be quick because they literally have none. There are zero skirmishers. These miniatures are from a rival faction called the Tomb Kings. Um, so this is going to create some very interesting aspects to the vampire counts tactically, but we'll talk about that more later. Now let's talk cavalry. The vampire counts can feel the unit of heavy cavalry known as the Black Knights, which appear to be unusually mobile for heavy cavalry and then they also field blood knights which are actually vampires on horseback in keeping within the typical lore of vampires they have superhuman strength so apparently this unit is an absolute wrecking ball now while they don't technically have light cavalry dire wolves are very large undead wolves that seem to have the intelligence necessary to operate of their own accord therefore this would make them fit the bill of light cavalry in some sort of abstract way. These guys are called hex wraiths. They're actually an ethereal cavalry, which means they can pass directly through friendly and enemy units, and they actually deal damage to living creatures when they pass through them. So this is going to make these guys a very scary flank unit, I think, since they have the potential to run all the way down the enemy battle line. Now we're going to move on to special units because the Vampire Counts also do not have dedicated artillery, but they have this thing called the Mortis Engine. It seems to have the effect of boosting up the casting ability of your allies while diminishing that of your enemies, and it also has a massive aura around it that will kill living things in it and strengthen undead things in it. So having this closely supporting your line would make it very hard to break. And then they have this thing called a corpse cart, which from what I understand, further boosts up your undead units within a certain proximity to it. So it would make the wall of undead even more formidable and more capable of attacking. This monstrosity is called a terror geist. Now it's one of the only units in the Vampire Counts roster that actually has the ability to perform a ranged attack. It's a scream that bypasses armor, so it makes it a useful heavy hitting unit. However, it's probably going to be too expensive to field in mass so you can't supplement its ranged attack to make it for your skirmishers. And also it's a glass cannon which means it hits like a dump truck but it's built like a Miata. Now there are a lot of other special units that I'm not going to cover any particular detail. You have your giant crypt horrors, giant bats, bat swarms, vodergeist, vodergoules, strigoi, but pretty much everything falls into two major categories in the Vampire Count's army. You either have fodder that's used to distract or blob up the enemies and otherwise serve as the anvil, and then you have the other units that are glass cannons and pretty much used as the hammers. Now in this section we're going to discuss 
the faction traits and the magic associated with the vampire accounts. Because realistically, there's two characteristics that really sum them up. Large, unbreakable, attrition-based armies and the magic that facilitates that. Okay, the first trait we are going to discuss is unbreakable. Large portions of the Vampire Count's armies will never rout because they are mindless and have no concept of fear or morale. So they just keep marching forward until the very last man dies. Next is fear, which functions just like fear in Total War. It's going to have an impact on the enemy's morale and make them more likely to break. And the final majorly defining trait is unstable. All of the undead animated creatures have to be sustained within the aura of the general or necromancers or whatever it is that's animating them. If they move outside of this aura or that unit is incapacitated, all of the undead animated creatures just simply cease to be animated and crumble. Or at the very least, their longevity is severely diminished. Now we're going to discuss their magic. Most of their spells are utilitarian in nature and they're used to buff up the army. They have spells that increase the move speed, the attack accuracy, and the damage of the attacks, meaning they can turn those really slow-moving, terrible zombies into somewhat of a formidable force. And of course, they have the spells that reanimate and create even more units, so they really get the attrition machine going and keep it going. Now they also have access to attack spells like Wind of Death and Curse of Ages, but it's just not the backbone of what makes this army what it is. Okay, let's talk tactics. Because the Vampire Counts have no dedicated artillery and no dedicated skirmishers, this means that in most cases they're going to have to take the fight to the enemy. Now their main battle line is going to be made up of a horde of cheap undead units that are bolstered and grown into even larger numbers by support units and spells. And behind that main battle line they're going to keep a tool belt of all kinds of glass cannons or hammers that can be pulled out when the time is right to smash the enemy. The overall tactic of the vampire counts is fairly simple. Attrition. You're going to have a large wall of undead that steamrolls towards the enemy. It's going to be able to absorb anything the enemy dishes out, arrows, charges, whatever. And eventually you want to blob them up and lock them down in a manner that you can get all of your hammer and glass cannon units into position for flanking attacks and hammers and anvil. Now I think the vampire counts are going to be a very interesting faction to play. Even though their overall battle tactic is pretty simple and straightforward, it's going to require a new level of micro to actually do it well. Now what I mean when I say this is reference to the aura management. Imagine for a second that you're playing a Germanic faction and you have to keep your entire army within the general's aura or within the Germanic noble's aura. Otherwise, they're useless. This is basically what it's like for the vampire counts. Any units outside of their magical aura are no longer sustained and will crumble. But that's not all. Depending on how they actually decide to implement the magic system, it could mean that you're cycling through a bunch of different spells to maintain your undead steamroller. Alright, now I'm going to quickly theorize on how their culture might unfold on the strategic map. Uh, they're counts, so they live in castles, so they're probably going to hold land in the very typical sense. Now, the necromatic magic that they use to raise their armies has the hidden drawback of sapping the life out of the land, so there's going to be a certain amount of degradation. Now, if this is tied specifically to buildings, then in theory you could dedicate a single province to recruiting and only degradate that province while you have healthy provinces, Otherwise, they might be reliant on imports and puppet states and things of that nature. All right, well, that's it for this video. I'd like to thank everybody for watching. Also, I'd just like to reiterate the fact that this is a theory on play style and in no way encompasses all possibilities and it's not set in stone. As always, feedback is greatly appreciated, especially from those of you who know Warhammer better than I do. And that's it for me. See you on the next video.